Hear now these words of Scripture. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand a sign, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jew and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts here, Lord, may they be pleasing and Enduring to you. You are our rock, our salvation. You are the constancy to which we can look to and rely upon. Amen. Last week, through the course of our uh, looking at the uncertainty in the world, we considered what is required if we want to be followers of Jesus. And though those requirements were given over 2,000 years ago, they continue to be relevant for followers of Christ today. Oh, we, we are not threatened like they were by being imprisoned if we talk about Jesus. There's no risk of losing our jobs because we tell someone that we believe in God or trust in the Spirit or look to Jesus. And we can practice our faith by going to church without being harassed in our world today, or in, at least in our society. We can pray in public or private as long as we don't try to force someone else to pray. But the demands are still there for us to deny ourselves, to be willing to take up our cross. And when we do those things, then we are more ready to follow Jesus. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life was an example as I raised the last week. An example of following Jesus in today's world, in today's society with, uh, with the things that are going on in our world, the injustices that continue, the, the struggles that we are aware of if we only look and listen and allow the Spirit to speak to us of what our calling or our response might be in today's world. Today we will focus on yet another important way we can be a follower of Jesus in today's world. In Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, he reminds Jesus' followers that the way of the cross will seem like foolishness to those, well, to those who are more worried about saving their lives or keeping themselves safe or free of all harm or all challenge or all struggle. Paul reminds us that God's wisdom will seem like foolishness. And I think it still can in today's world. So today's followers of Jesus will be thought of as foolish Especially and whenever or wherever we make sacrifices for the gospel. 
In the church-wide study, I hope you've been reading, embracing the uncertain. We are reminded in chapter 3 of the uncertainty of worry. The author recites the words of that wonderful old gospel song, His Eye is on the Sparrow. And I have to confess, it was a great learning for me, a, a new revelation for me, not knowing where the inspiration of the song came. But this song is a reminder of Jesus' words in the 12th chapter of Luke when he says this, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God? Don't be afraid, for you are worth more than many sparrows. Part of the worldly wisdom, as I suggested last week, is, is watching out for ourselves and Certainly, this is a good thing for us to watch out for ourselves. But we are reminded with Jesus' words when he tells his followers not to worry about food or clothing or housing. For God is watching over us. But the challenge is this. Even when God is watching over us and when, when Christ is with us and when the Spirit is journeys with us wherever we go, it's not a guarantee that our lives will be easy. It's not a guarantee that we will not run up against a few challenges here and there. Even in our world, even in our society. Just like love is not always lovey-dovey. <laughs> Loving as Jesus loves will not be easy. As Judy reminded us, you might be smart. I don't number myself among being smart, but you might be smart or sharp as a tack. But the wisdom that God has for us and invites us to look to may not be a part of that intelligence that we have. Following Jesus in today's world is, is not a warranty that we will have a life free of challenges. And this is why the author in, in, the, in the book study recalls the history of the song, the her own inspiration, or the author's inspiration of this song, His Eye is on the Sparrow, it, it came not just from this text in Luke chapter 12, but the author went to visit a, a certain couple, Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle, who lived in New York, went to visit them because their their inspiration and their tenacity in life was amazing to the author of this song. And so she went to visit them at their home and, and Mr. Doolittle was confined to a wheelchair because of his own medical condition or struggles. And if that were not enough, Mrs. Doolittle was, was confined to the bed because of her own medical struggles and disabilities. When Martin, the author of His Eyes on the Sparrow, asked the Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle how they were so, how they maintained such, such joy in life and such hope and, and they were so tenacious in their lives and and their Christianity, Mrs. Doolittle, responded with this phrase, his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. And that was the inspiration Martin needed to write the words to this beautiful song that many of us know well. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me through thick and thin, through good and bad, through challenging and easy, through happiness and sadness. 
worldly vision, worldly wisdom suggests that one who was in a wheelchair or one who was confined, confined to a bed or suffering with some other challenges will severely limit what they can do and how inspiring they might be. But God's wisdom tells us the opposite. For those who love God and strive to follow Jesus, all things are possible, we are told. All things are possible. For Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle, their physical and medical limitations would not dampen their spirits. They would not allow it. Why? Because they knew God was watching over them and loved them and cared for them and continued to call them. World wisdom would suggest if God is on our side, we will be healthy, wealthy, and wise. But Jesus reminds us that health and wealth are numbered among those things that can be taken away from us at any moment. And human and worldly wisdom must, must be tempered by God's wisdom. Indeed, the wisdom of God is its highest and greatest seen in the life and the death of Jesus Christ, who did not consider his own divine status or his knowledge or his ability as something to be used for his own good, but rather sacrificed himself, laid his status aside for the good of the world, you and I included. Is this considered wise by world standards that you and I come together every month and we break bread and, and we take a piece of that bread that is broken, symbolic of, of the life and the body of Christ given for us and, and we dip it in a cup and, and we take it in trusting and believing that Christ is with us, that that Christ loves us, that, that God's love is greater than death itself. It may not seem wise to some to trust in things that we see, but we don't see Jesus standing among us today. It's good to study and learn from world wisdom, but it's even better, even richer, even life-giving to trust in a wisdom that may on the surface seem like foolishness. Jesus invites us this day and every day to trust that he is with us, that his love, that he lives out and dies for, is more powerful than death itself. My friends, we are all invited again to be considered foolish, but yet wise. Let us pray. O oh Lord, for your love and your grace that is unlike any other thing in our world, that is more powerful than everything and more life-giving, even greater than death itself, we want to trust in that kind of wisdom, Lord, and that powerful love that you offer to us. Give us the courage and the strength and the willingness to trust you even in a world that 
can feel so uncertain, unsteady. Give us a true security, O God, the security of your love and your salvation through Christ Jesus our Lord. In his name we pray, amen.